Life, like any journey, involves stops along the way. Sometimes there are detours, sometimes we're blocked by barriers, and sometimes beautiful and unexpected things happen. This is one such journey, the journey of my life. My name is Dini Wejanitias. I'm not an actress. I'm the real Dini of the story, and this is my life. Let the journey begin. I was on a business trip, taking the Jakarta Yogyakarta Express, when the train came to an unexpected stop. Excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Why are we stopping here? I don't know, ma'am. There may be mechanical difficulty. When are you going to know something? I'm going to ask the engineer, ma'am. You're coming back, aren't you? Can you believe this? We'd probably be stuck here all day. And I can guarantee you that the air conditioner is going to give out. And it's already getting hot. What do you see? They are not going to make us get out here, are they? Imagine. What? Imagine what? I grew up here, in this area. Oh, really? Good. So you know where we are. Good. Gombong. Gombong? Ah, my sister is meeting me at Yogyakarta. When will we get there? My... Where did that conductor go? Tejo Kaniawan's family. Are you Mrs. Kaniawan? I am Tejo Kaniawan's wife. Mr. Kaniawan has had a heart attack. Did you say a heart attack? But how is this possible? A lab report indicates he had diarrhea. We couldn't understand what had happened. My father had been perfectly fine one moment, then ill with diarrhea and vomiting the next. After we checked his blood pressure... Several hours after he was taken to the hospital, he had a heart attack, and then he died. We were going to inform you. 
now. He died just like that. I felt as if I had been struck by lightning. We did the best we could. We did our best to help Mr. Kuniawan, but... But... He has passed away. It's impossible. Impossible, Tejo Dan. It's impossible. It's impossible. What will happen to my baby? We join you in your grief. Sorry, ma'am. I can't accept this. What should I do? I'm here for you. Don't, Don't worry. Something. I'm here. Don't worry. Please. There's something I have to tell you. I'm right here with you. <laughs> my father had been having an affair with my aunt Sundari, my mother's sister. She was eight months pregnant when my father died, but that wasn't all. My mother was also pregnant at the time. I didn't know what to do or where to turn. All along, I considered my dad as a hero. Now I felt betrayed. Please go ahead, sir. And I was worried about how our lives were going to turn out. Ladies and gentlemen, may God's peace and blessing be upon you. I was 12 years old, the oldest of five children, and now my mother was pregnant again. Mother wasn't a working woman. How were we going to live? We gather today because my brother Tejo has passed away. Ladies and gentlemen, if he did wrong in his life, I hope that you will forgive him. I will be responsible for whatever he did. And peace be upon you, and God's mercy and blessings be upon you, and peace be upon you. I suppose Aunt Sundari had divorced, though I wouldn't have thought so at the time. Because of the affair with my father and her pregnancy, she fell into disgrace. Because of that, she left Gongbong, not knowing where to go. I did give Wulandari some advice, though. Then what happened next? Actually, I told her. I pointed out that abortion is one way to handle her predicament. We have to think realistically, you know. By the way, have you heard? Heard what? Didn't you hear that Tejo had a second mistress? <gasps> it's mistress over by Bandong. Where did you hear oh. that? I think Sanjaya, her cousin who came yesterday, she told me. Which cousin is that? <laughs> the one married to the taxi driver. <laughs> now, let me tell you this. Mm. The chickens and the fighting cocks should fetch a handsome price. Mm. You must have had a lot of money. Mm. And that doesn't include the photography studio. Oh, I never knew your brother was such an accomplished photographer. You never told me. Oh, my brother had a lot of skills, actually. Many skills, actually. He was good. Especially with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't know about Tijo Kuniwan? At any pace, he could get any woman he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We'll wait and see what will happen to the family. The saddest part concerns Sundari. I don't know what she's going to do. I know she'll be knocking on your door soon, I suppose, looking for a handout. Who else can she ask for help? Will she come to me? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I agree with you. She'll come to my house, all right. But if she meets my wife at the door, there's nothing I can do about her. <laughs> the very people we were counting on to help us said things which hurt the heart. At that point, I didn't know what to do. I felt only God could save us. You were just a child at that time. Yes, I never went back to the field ever again. When my father's pension finally came through, we moved to Semrong. My mother opened a small store next to the house to make ends meet, but it was always a struggle. Eventually, she decided to put up for adoption two of my sisters and one of my brothers. I also heard things were worse for Anne Sundari. After her son was born, she moved to Sukoharjo to live with my grandmother. Two years went by. Those were difficult years. Hey, don't do that. He's my son. All of you, go away. Hey! Why are you all quiet? Aren't they your children? I can't believe you're all quiet. So this is how you raise your children. Your little kids are bastards, not my son. Hey! No one asked you to bring your problems to this town, you know? Telling us how we need to raise our children? Huh? Who taught you to jump into bed with every man you meet? At least I waited to have kids until I got married. Not like you! You probably don't even know who your son's father is. She doesn't even know her son's father. Nowhere else to go, and Sundari and Bambang left Tsukohajo and came to Zemarang. Against my wishes, my mother gave in to Sundari's pleas and decided to take them in. It seemed to me at the time that we had enough problems of our own. Later, would you help me take the clothes off the line? Go away! What are you doing here? I said, go away! Do you know? I hate you! I hate you! Fill up the bucket again. It's all right. Please don't worry. Dini is watching him.
Whose diary is that? What gives you the right to read someone else's diary? Bring it here! Bring it here! When I discovered Anston Diary reading my diary, I could not hold it in anymore. While I may have written some cruel things about her and Bambang, they were all true. At least they were all true to me. After that, I told my mother to choose between them and me. I should have been happy to see Anston Diary and Bambang go back to Sukarhajo, and I was. But anger toward the two of them began to give way to anger toward someone else, my mother. I discovered she planned to marry again, a decision she had made without discussing with anyone else in the family. And I began to think, what is the point in praying five times a day or not cheating in school? What's the point in restraining myself from sinful things if I won't be entering heaven anyway? because I can't forgive my mother. It all made me so angry, I finally came to the conclusion that I didn't care about religion anymore. I didn't care about being polite. I just wanted to be free. I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and I decided nothing was going to get in my way, including religion. So I started breaking every rule there was. It was my first year of high school. I did everything I wanted. But then I saw things that were shocking. Such as seeing one of my friends crawling on the floor and bleeding because she had a miscarriage. Or another friend going to jail because he was caught stealing. I began to ask myself, is this really the kind of life I want? Life within the confines of religion hadn't made me happy, but a free life without the rules of religion wasn't something I wanted either. Then came Ramadan, and I found myself turning back to my faith. I began to spend time reading religious books and praying again. I read the Quran sincerely and felt a great desire to be close to God. I truly wanted to find peace. I prepared myself for the Tahajjud prayer. I wanted to ask God about many things. I had a strong faith that whatever I asked for that night, God will listen to me and give his answer. I prayed according to the memorized verses. Truly, my heart was broken and I cried out to God. Oh God, oh God, from the depths of my heart, I want to please you more than anything. Please show me the way, God, and I promise I'll follow you wherever you lead me. But if you don't, if you don't show me the way tonight, I don't know, I don't know what I will do. If you don't show me the way tonight, don't blame me for what happens. Don't blame me for living the way I choose. But if you... But if you show me who you are and what 
What do you want from me? I promise you. I promise you, my dear God, that I will follow you wherever you lead. At that moment, a bright light began to appear in front of me. It took the form of a figure, a man in a white robe. I couldn't see the details of his face, but his presence was somehow calm and reassuring. And suddenly, without knowing how, I realized he was Jesus, and he said, follow me. Dini, follow me. I was very confused because I thought, Lord, I'm a Muslim. How is it possible to follow you? You're the one that people call the God of the Christians, the God of the infidels, who don't know Allah. And he waited for me to come to him. Tears began to cover my face, and finally I said, God, if this is the way of truth, then I want to follow you. At that moment, I felt a peace I had never felt before. I saw him smiling, and then he slowly left. I hope I haven't offended you, ma'am. Whatever happened, obviously affected you deeply. I'll never be the same. I've never been the same since that day. I understand. Tell me what happened next. I looked for someone who was a Christian. There was none in my small village. I looked, but I knew of a Christian family in a village nearby. I started to go there. They were afraid of me at first because I asked them for a Bible. But eventually, they gave me a Bible and I began to read it. I hid everything from my mother. But she found out before long. I know, mothers always find out. What happened next? Well, she pleaded with me to change. She cried. She thought she was a failure as a mother, that somehow it was all her fault, or that I was still angry with her, you know, trying to get revenge. And the rest of the family? <laughs> Yarkas! You're not a member of this family anymore! Arif, don't be so harsh. She needs time to reconsider, that's all. She's had plenty of time to reconsider. This has gone far enough. 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 I made a promise to God that if he would show me the way, I would follow him. Forgive me. I don't mean to hurt anyone here, but... But I've made my decision. Dini, your mother and I have also made our decision. As Muslims and as Japanese, we have, we have a serious responsibility to raise our children. The obligation of children is to respect and obey their parents. You have to understand that. If you choose to go your own way, in this matter of religion, then you must be responsible for your own life. From now on, you make your own decisions and you take care of yourself. You know what that means. You have to find your own money for everything. Food, school, a place to live, everything, everything. Dini, what your uncle means is that you no longer have the right to ask your parents 
for anything. You can't ask anything. I believe you know that. Now, get your things and leave. Hurry up! Come here, my little boy. I don't know where the strength came from, but I left home. I moved to another city named Solo. I was 16 years old. I rented a room and began to go to school to become a social worker. I had already completed my first year of studies while in Semarang. The administrators of the school in Solo accepted me as a transfer student without any questions. I found a part-time job after school and managed to get by. I figured if something went wrong, I could always go to my grandmother for help. I spent three years in Solo. I return home for visits every so often. When I graduated from school, I eventually found a job in Samarang. When I moved back, it was difficult at first, but eventually things got back to normal. Well, <laughs> that's a relief. I guess it's behind you now. It must have been a struggle for them to forgive. No, no, actually the one who struggled the most was I. I thought, I thought Christians are supposed to forgive. Yes, that is true. But it can be a very, very long distance. From here... to here. Come in, come in, have a seat. No, no, that's all right. You look exhausted. Well, I think I'm worried more than tired. I thought if we moved back here, Bang Bang would change. If you see him now, he just sits in his room with his mind wandering off most of the time. Or he's walking the streets. That's not good. He definitely needs a job. Yes, I understand, but what can he do? He's only been through the ninth grade. He doesn't have a trade. He can't do anything. Don't worry, I'm sure something will turn up. Let me give you some food to take home with you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Hi, I am Dini. Dini? Yes, it's me, Dini. Is your mother home? Yes, she is. Mom, Dini is here. Dini? And... Please, have a seat. Do you want something to drink, Dini? Please don't trouble yourself. A few days ago, I overheard a conversation between you and Mom. I... I can't handle it. I'm so sorry. I've treated you so badly. Forgive me. For 
forgive me. It's all right, Dini. I am so ashamed. Please forgive me. Forgive me for the mean things I've done to both of you. Forgive me, please. I'm so sorry. That's fine, Dini. I have already forgiven you. Bum Bum came back with me to Jakarta. When we got settled, I gave him money to start a small business selling shoes at the market. After three months, he began to make a profit and didn't need money from me anymore. Where is he now? In Jakarta. He's doing fine. Sorry, I, I always cry at happy endings. But actually, this is not the ending. So what happened next? Is there something better? Oh, much better. There was still one person I needed to forgive. Your uncle? The one who slapped you? He wouldn't have been so quick with the hands if I'd been around. No, no. I forgave him a long time ago. It was my father. Your father? But he died when you were a young girl. Exactly. And left me with all the confused thoughts and bitterness. To sort things out on my own. He left me all alone with my problems. And now you have forgiven him, right? <laughs> That happen just now. Do you see that cemetery across the way? Yes, I see it. My father is buried there. until this train stopped a short while ago. My unforgiveness was buried there, too. But God, because He is the God of love, couldn't let me have it my way. I had to learn my lessons. He says that if we want to be forgiven our sins, we must forgive those who have sinned against us. As I've been telling you the story, I've been thinking back on how much I loved my father and how my father really did love me. Had good times, you know? Wonderful times, and I need to remember that. It's as if God stopped the train just for you. I've been thinking about that. As if, as if you know God intimately, as if God is your best friend. He told me to follow him. I haven't always known where he's taking me. But no, I know I can trust him to take me where I need to go. He will take care of whatever I need. He's always with me. We 
we're moving. Yes, we're moving. And they didn't turn off the air conditioning. <laughs> no, they didn't. I guess now the story ends here. Or is it just beginning? Does this one have a happy ending? Ma'am, you'll have to tell me how it ends. In the Holy Scriptures, God declared the Messiah would come to be the Savior of the world. The life of Jesus gives evidence that he is indeed the one the prophets spoke about. Isaiah prophesied that the virgin will conceive a child and will give birth to a son. Centuries later, the birth of Jesus was the fulfillment of that prophecy. The Holy Scriptures declared that the Holy One to be born would be called the Son of God. This means that Jesus was to be called the Son of God in a spiritual, not a physical sense. We see this in how he lived his life. He healed people from disease, forgave their sins, turned them back to God, and promised them a place in God's eternal kingdom. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin in their place, and then rose again, conquering death. Jesus said, No one can take my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. The life of Jesus not only fulfilled the writings of the prophets, but also confirmed the truth of God's holy word. The prophets declared, The word of the Lord is flawless. Your word, O Lord, is eternal. Jesus himself said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Jesus came to give us life in all its fullness. But when man disobeyed God in the Garden of Eden, he chose to go his own way, and his actions separated him from the Creator. The Holy Scriptures declare that all have sinned, and the payment for sin is death. This means a spiritual death, eternal separation from God. But just as God provided a ram to die in place of Abraham's son, so he sent Jesus the Messiah to die in our place. His life, death, and resurrection restored the relationship between God and all those who put their trust in him. Now those who follow Jesus not only have their sins forgiven, but are saved from God's eternal judgment. They are assured of paradise and will live with him forever. It is this life and freedom from the guilt and power of sin that Jesus offers each person today. This does not mean following a religion, but choosing to have faith in Jesus, who says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him. This means turning to God and trusting Jesus to come into our lives, to forgive our sins, and to make us what he wants us to be. It is not enough to intellectually agree with his claims, nor to have an emotional experience. We receive him by grace through faith as an act of the will. When people are ready to become followers of Jesus, the Messiah, they may speak to him in a simple prayer. Perhaps you are ready now to open your life to God. If so, you may join in the following prayer to him, silently, in your heart. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I confess and repent of my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life.
Make me the kind of person you want me to be. As I become one of your followers. Amen. Jesus said about his followers, My sheep recognize my voice. I know them and they follow me. In order to experience the abundant life which Jesus promised, his followers talk to God each day in prayer and read or listen to his word. They tell others about him and meet regularly with those who love and follow him. Remember his wonderful promise. All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Lo, I am with you always even to the end of the world.